So it's Halloween 2020, COVID Halloween. So I thought what we'd do for my good friend Anthony is do a, a bit of a mummy challenge on using, well, we're using Gravity Sketch in VR and we're gonna make this mummy um, very quickly, put him together and just pose him and, and do all of the different shapes and poses that we would do to concept up a really cool Halloween mummy. So let's dive right in. So, Halloween week, um, what better thing to do than a mummy? So this is Gravity Sketch. This is um, it's a VR sculpting program that's much more uh, CAD based than it is um, organic sculpting. So these things that I'm sculpting in the air have actual control vertices. So this is more of what you would see in programs like Fusion 360 and um, Rhino and programs like that. So less of the sculptural element that you would see in programs like Oculus Medium. So I wanted to do something for Anthony's channel. So I want to do a mummy. So I'm going to do first things first. I'll set the scene a little bit. So I'm going to go and go to the settings. I'm left handed, by the way. You can see me using my left hand here. I'm going to change the scene to something dark like that. And I think I'll put on a floor. So if we go to settings, there's the ability to put on a stage floor, like so. <clears throat> I only want that on for a while. Um, and I think I won't have symmetry on at all, so let's just lay down something so we've got a stroke. So that will change in a moment. Now, because we've got a, a, a stroke and a scene now, we've got, we're going to do a mummy, aren't we? So the mummy's going to be in the scene here somewhere. And I will have him with his arms outstretched. And the great thing about VR, if you've never tried it, is it's quite fast and loose like this. So you can really kind of experiment a lot um, just with gesture drawing like so. Uh, and that is true geometry. And we can pick it up and move it around and try different things. So if I wanted to say there was a head here, I could do that and that. I could group those two. And we won't use any of this. This is just for sketching and laying out. So that's this is just shapes. So... Uh, you know, I could probably get the feel of a character before I ever model anything um, accurately. So, before we do that, before we go any further, what we want to do is we'll make a new layer. So, that layer that we've just done all that sketching on, we could make that transparent. Even the floor could go transparent if we need it to. Um, let's make it a bit transparent. It's locked anyway. Make a new layer. And then I'm going to go to reference images and I'm going to bring in a load of reference images for a specific reason. And I'll show you why once I've done it. These are just ones I've, I've had for a while. Uh, so I've got bandages. Obviously we're going to do a mummy. Now I'm bringing it into the scene but I'm not going to use it this way in the scene. So all these images here, I'll probably just delete them. Because what I've actually done is now, if you look here on my uh, dominant hand on the colour palette, all of them are now materials and what that means is um, I can change the settings on the materials a little bit so we can pick that one and we could say do that which is now sketch and tune so it gives you an outline you'll see that if I do this so look so there we've got the we've got the texture mapped onto that stroke and it's given us a stroke outline as well so it's quite cartoony which I like so probably what I'll do is I'll pick one of the lighter colored ones or what about this one yeah that will do and I'll do, and I'll lay out some bones first of all, because if I want the, if I want a mummy, I want something underneath the mummy. So I, I know roughly what kind of pose I want, but first of all, I'm just going to lay down the the, the 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 body or the or the skeleton that the the bandages are going to go on. So this this will never be seen as well. So this is more just for for me to. Um, be able to wrap those bandages around. So there's a rib cage. Um, I could do a. So if I was going to do vertebra. I could do this. So which is make some shapes that's like a vertebra. Group them all together, and then do this. Watch. I'll just. So I'm going to scale that down. It won't go any smaller for some reason. Which is a bit. Oh, there you go. So it was, it was stuck. So I want the the spine to come like this. And look at that straight away with very little work. It's just given us a spine. Um, now all of that is a group um, I, 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 that I'm going to keep together. I want to be able to twist it a little bit, but 
Um, I want to be able to move it around, but generally as a group, that's that's enough. So if I just group it all like that, that means that's one piece. I can make it a bit higher. I don't think I've given it enough room on the legs. So the leg might be. But let me show you something else that this will do. So if you grab it and hit the blue button, and then you can increase the scale of the the, the points. So watch if I go left and right. So that almost helps me make the what they call the greater trochanter there. That's the bit that goes into your hip. Um, so that would be as simple as that, really. Now if I do it this way, it probably needs more for the kneecap here. It didn't look right, did it? Like so, there we go. And we'll group all of them. And then we'll we will just twist them around, but then what we'll do is we'll go blue button and then move these points around. And that means it, it's the reverse of that. So that means we've got a there. We've got um basically the oh it's way too wide, look I didn't even notice that. There we go. There we go. So that's the femur. We don't need that bit. Looks bad. So let's go down here and we'll do we'll do a kneecap. But we can do this the same. So there's two bones here, tibia and fibula, and we want two of them. And then we want some feet. So this is easy. Just this doesn't really matter. So I'm just doing. I could do. Um, something else and make some separate bones but it's never going to be seen so um, that big toe is a bit too big I do want it a bit cartoony but don't want it completely childish so I'm just trying to think of the the things that would mean the most to make it look a little bit realistic not realistic but it just needs to have a bit of bite to it I suppose there we go that's fine let's get all of that foot Let's just move it out of the way, move the leg back, group the foot. And it doesn't matter that the in fact we can unlink it. I was gonna say it doesn't matter that the toe is on the wrong side, but it really does actually. There we go. There's the foot. So you can see I've got a skeleton to play with already. So I don't need that layer now. So see this layer? That can go completely, we can delete that. We're just gonna, we, we, we know roughly where we, we're gonna be now with, with this. Now, because this is all gonna be inside, I can use repeats that will never cause me a problem. Obviously, anyone who knows their anatomy might have a problem with it, but we don't care. Because what we're gonna do is wrap it with bandages once we're once we're happy. Now, I will use that tool I was gonna I was telling you about. This is this one, this is the volume tool um, with points. Let me just see, yeah, there we go. And what I'm going to do is just make make some small finger bones. In fact, I'll tell you what I'll do. There's a different thing we can do here. So if you take the volume tool and then do planar, that means you can, and then you half depress on your non-dominant hand, you can now draw shapes on a plane with the points. So if we want to do, oh, I've just let go by mistake. Red button undoes. So if we do this, I'm actually making a bone. And then what I love about that is you can just click it, the blue button, and you can just increase it and decrease it. So as a finger bone, that's perfect. So if it's a finger bone, we can use it as the back of the hand as well. So we'll turn it around to get a bit of a, we want the knuckle one, two, three, four. And then just put a bit of visual interest underneath. I'll turn it the other way and then what I will do because we're going to do two hands and, I, and these do matter actually so we'll do one and two at the same time and then we'll just get the hand doing something let's do one finger at a time so we'll, we'll do this one put the points on and what are the points mean we can move it around so that bone can now be changed so that's that finger, and then this one's even shorter like that. So there's a bony finger, and we need group it. But bear in mind that knuckle is always embedded in, so we'll have that one, that one, that one, and that one. And then 
we'll increase the size, ungroup it because we don't need this last joint, group those last two and there's your thumb. Now if you want to enhance that a little bit, you can put some tendons in. So we go back to the other tool, in fact we won't do that until we've done this, which is the other hand. So, so that's our left and right, let's get it right. I know it's massive, but it doesn't really matter. Um, so we'll make this one a pointing finger, like so. So it's a different shaped hand. And we'll use this one, one, and we'll really curl these next ones under now. So we'll do this. So, so you've got a very different feel to that hand. He moved his arm then by mistake. There we go. So we'll group that one. We'll group that one if we haven't already. Yeah. And then they can be smaller. That's cool. And then, oh, we didn't do a thumb, did we? Say we, it's my fault, not yours. Um, we want this here. There we go. So we've just got some hands to play with. Um, and it's got a little bit of a crazy pointing finger there, look. So that'll be useful in the in the final model. Well, we left one of his bones behind then. Which one do we leave? The finger. The end finger, was it? Yeah, this one. There we go. So I'm feeling that within a few minutes we've roughed out a really nice skeleton to play with. It's going to help us with the posing. Now, we're going to have to do a skull, uh, and I'm going to use another tool for this. So, um, I'm going to go cube, subdivision. Uh, in fact, no, I won't use subdivision. Let's just stick with what we're doing here. Let's just use this volume tool. So, I, I was going to use subdivision, but I'm thinking it would be nice to just try and keep it just to these tools, um, which are very stylized. Um, and then we'll do turn planar off. And then we'll just make a skull, which is only just a circle, basically, like so. And then we're keeping it all with these very basic tools rather than getting into heavy sub D at this stage. And then we need to draw lots of shapes as part of this skull. So. Let me change the settings to. Uh, no, it's already on preform. I know what we'll do. We'll go back to ink. I want it to be a bit more shaped, like like that. Yeah, that's fine. Because again, we're not going to see any of this. What we're going to see is um, the bandages wrapped around this. So I'm going to put an eye in here. So I want the suggestion of a nose. And I want an eye in here, and that's a suggestion of a cheek. But then that's it, because nothing else is going to be seen. So I'll, I could do the jaw, but we're, again, we'll never see it. Um, let's just make sure that doesn't look too much of an odd shape. That would be fine. Well, let's put some bright red eyes into it. So I need primitive, circle, bright red eye. And then we get rid of that material. We just make a new material. Um, and make it nice and bright red. There we go. So in there, when the light catches it, we've got two fiery red eyes. Um, and you'll see what I mean in a moment because it, it, it you know it might look a little bit weak as a design, but then it, it, it really doesn't matter. Um because as soon as we've got a bandage on it, that's nothing more than a placeholder. So there you go, we've got the outline of a skeleton. And what we can do is now just start thinking about posing before we put bandages on. Um so what do we want this guy doing? Do we want him shambling? So 
maybe bring him down a bit because he can bend his legs a bit more so he's dragging one leg which would mean this leg will be forward like so that's one way of doing it arc him forward a bit have him turning this way and then obviously it's a mummy isn't he so we need the hands coming out stretched like this something like that it looks a bit so he's like number one zombie number one mummy maybe turn that hand so I'm using it now as a posing tool so I'm just having a bit of fun with it trying all the different poses so you've basically made your own posing tool what we do need here what would be useful is shoulder blades so let's get some volume in here and that just that'll really inform the design a little bit yeah that looks that looks better because they'll they'll be hold they'll help me to hold the the shape a little bit and he will have um need to go back to this one and he will have his collarbone which will be like this something like this there we go a few more ribs wouldn't go amiss just seeing seeing things to do there that might matter later on so just improve the hips a little bit and just get some volume in there just in case that hip pops through okay that's enough um, I don't know whether I like it uh, it's a good start or should we have him in a crazy running pose this is the bit that's quite fun now because we're really experimenting with character shapes and all sorts so that's a running mummy, maybe. Don't know. Don't know whether I'm feeling it yet. So I'm not going to go anywhere until I'm happy that I've got a character that's doing something that I like. I remember doing years ago a breakdancing mummy. So I could easily turn him into a breakdancing mummy, but that would be a bit cliched if I've done it once before. Um, no, I quite. I'm going to go back. I think I quite like what I was doing. Just the shambling mummy was was where I was I was enjoying that. <clears throat> so that's fine. Okay, so let's have a look at bandages then. So this is where we can start experimenting a little bit. So we've got um, several different tools. So we could just try. Um, we could make one bandage and repeat it with a surface tool. And by that I mean this. This is the. This is the surface tool look. So I could easily do that. So that's one way of doing it. Um, I could take something like this, which is a material that's a, a, a PNG. So basically a texture that's a PNG. And look, it's got bits of it missing. But then that doesn't, if it was the other way around, it might work. But I don't think that'll work for what we want here. So, so far I'm quite liking the surface idea. Um, Stroke, we don't need the revolve tool, we can't use that. And volume tool, not really, because it's gonna, it, it, you know, it, it's evolving the the shape. So we will use that a bit more, but it's, and even with the holes in it, it's just not gonna give me what I want. So the, so the winner is uh, the surface tool. So let's try some different materials, first of all. So with the surface tool then, this one, I'm gonna take off that initial tension so it means it's flat, and we'll do points. Um, and that's it. That's all we need to do. So let's have a look at what we need to do. So if we start here, and I'm just laying down points. Look. So that would be how the bandages begin to evolve, and you can change them. So you can and you can add splits, and you can. We want bandages flapping in the wind at, later on, but that would be fine um, as a, as a starting point. So let's lay down quite a few of them then, and see how far we get. So, 
and you're just basically wrapping bandages around the mummy now and then you can increase the size by moving it up and down if you don't if you don't cover a bone correctly then go over it see how I've not covered it correctly there from that angle but actually that looking through looks quite good I think I think I think the bone poking through is is quite useful And there's the there's a bandage trailing that's fine let's do some over the feet and don't worry if you don't want to keep going over and over you can just take a piece and repeat it like so so for example if you want to do the other foot just take those pieces just repeat them like that so let's move up this leg I'm going to zoom right in now didn't cover it properly then so I'm just basically painting bandages around the model and we'll leave a big gap there because I quite like it when it starts showing the bone through and we'll leave the bones showing through where the kneecap is as well because that's usually quite useful we'll wrap it heavily so see the bone there you can still see it sticking through and we'll drop some bandages off like so and let's just start working up the leg there we go and I'll do some opposite way. Just throwing in a little bit of visual interest here. That's fine. Duplicate that. Don't really need to take any more time than that. It's starting to come together now already. You can see that. So let's wrap his body now. Um, so this will this will take quite a lot of bandages. So we'll do a couple of big ones first. I'm varying the size here. Come up around. And then add some smaller ones. Could look very samey here if we're not careful. So I'm going to do it in lots of different ways. And then what I'm doing there is I'm just going in and editing the points so that I can make sure it doesn't have any ridiculous looking points where it's sticking through the mesh or anything like that that's that one okay and then we'll go we might have to come from the back as well this could look this could look odd I'm going to do some inside so it gives you like a layering effect this didn't work did it this one's looking odd here look so we'll lay these points down Now we'll move his head out because we want to do his head separately uh, and we'll move the arm out, let's just do, oh hang on, that's attached to that for some reason so put that back and we'll move this arm out and we'll do these as separates. So let's get these right. I'm not, I'm not undoing it if I let go accidentally because it really isn't any kind of accuracy that I'm after. You can hear me clicking probably. That's cool. Just repeat those there and then you always want the obligatory bandages coming off the arm, like so. We'll put a few more inside just to give it a bit more visual interest. I don't want any on the hands because I quite like what we've got going on with the hands. What I will do is I'll bandage up a bit more here with thinner. And then we want to be able to keep these as separates. And then these as, um, well, this is separate 
and these are hose one because we're going to start grouping these up in a moment like that and the same over here so let's just make sure we've got the right parts together there you go that arm doesn't look good to me I'm going to do some hanging bandages here I will undo that one because it doesn't look good there we go that looks better now there wasn't enough there wasn't enough bandage around there to make it look good put some very specific ones around his back here what I think I'll do in these certain little parts is I think I might use the stroke or the or the the ink tool and then add some maybe even darker bandages just got to make it look interesting in the areas where they aren't full what we'll do there actually is we'll put some dark bandages inside so it looks like he's got something going on inside and that'll catch a bit of a not so much the light but it'll sh you know that every now and again you'll see the dark popping through and that'll just look like there's more going on there than there is see like let me just show you what I mean so this here because it's a transparent PNG we've got all that uh, transparency at the end and it basically gives you like that woody effect like a, like a splintered end of a bone um, so that can be quite useful for just v giving you visual interest where you don't really it's like greeble for a spaceship really. you're just making it look interesting from certain angles um, now the important bit this crazy head so we'll do this bit by bit so go back to our bandage I'm going to be very careful with this one, certainly around the front. What I'll do is I'll do some of the darker one here as well. Let's put a big one across his nose. See, it's hiding all of that problem. I mean, this is very much a cut, you know, this isn't what you would be doing in Maya. This isn't the kind of modeling that we would do in, in, in or even in ZBrush or anything like that. This is really just idea generation. Um, and it's just giving you, giving you tons of visual interest to, to play with. Let's wrap around the back now. I don't need that bit there. I'm going to undo that bit and push it in. It just looked too much. There we go. And then around here. And then we'll make it look good from the other angles. Wrap his mouth up. There we go. Let's have a look at what it looks like. Yeah, so it's a bit wonky, that's good. Um, now we'll do what we did before. We'll use the dark, um, um, there we go, the ink first and maybe the stroke. And we'll just see what we can get with this trans, with the PNG again. See if it gives us anything additional. Yeah, it's not too bad. It'll look good from a distance. Every artist says when it's not working. 
and then I'll do a certain amount around his jaw there. There we go. So it doesn't look too bad at all uh, as you as you pull out from it. And we do want quite a bit of bandages falling down. So we would have to go back to our surface and then like so. We want the bandages flapping around, don't we? maybe those eyes can go back a little bit more maybe this forehead can come down a bit just adding in where I'm seeing where I need more either stuff hidden or revealed I'm just adding in more there we go We have a crazy bandaged head, which doesn't look too bad from that angle. As I said, it would look good as we as we pull out from it. So, where, where it looks weak now, um, maybe some more bandages on the body. Maybe more here around the side. And what we'll do, we will do what I said, which is go and use the uh, stroke more now. Because inside this won't matter at all. It will just add more visual interest. It will just break up what you, you know, what you, what you're seeing. And you can see the bandage is there. It's quite well exposed as part of the texture as it as it comes up you know as is it's in between the um, the wrapped bandages there we go so let's just pull him apart again so let's make sure our feet are separate so that's one group just pull it out that's two groups, three groups, four groups, five groups, six groups, seven, just making sure I'm capturing everything here. Eight. And there we go, nine, ten. So we've now got a pieced up zombie. Uh, sorry, I keep set calling it a zombie. It's a mummy, isn't it? So what we can do at this point before we do anything else is let's go to settings, save the sketch. Oops, in it wrong. Settings, save the sketch, clear it, mummy. Oh, I didn't clear it right. M U M M Y O O one, and then we've got a baseline to work with. So now we can go to town. We can go crazy now. Um, I um, I think what I might do is no, we'll leave the we'll leave the ground because what we'll do is we'll put um, maybe if we put a cube in. Just a normal cube, and we give it one of these wooden textures, and then change the settings to see if we're there. We go. So we've now got our own floor, and we can get rid of that floor now. It was just a nice way to start with. Um, with having a floor in the right place, so let's just move this along. This is a sub D object, but we're not going to sub D it. Just 
going to use it to eventually you have to click with your thumb to um, get the different components as if you you know as if you're doing um, edges faces and verts so I'll just do it like that and give us something to build on to won't it okay so let's just pose our guy now so because um, everything's in parts now we can have a bit of a, a bit of a mess around really so so let's put some weight further forward on this foot make the foot a bit bigger and then we'll bring that knee here like so bring that body ar arch it over bring them all back a little bit I'm gonna look at it all around now if you hold down your non-dominant hand uh, grip and then hold the fire button on the non-dominant hand you get this which is an ability to do a first person spin around so that's quite useful um, and it'll just it'll snap it to the ground so it'll help you to know that you know if you're off so, so the one thing that's good about that stage floor is it's level so what you can always do is level that and then turn the stage floor back off so now when you do that that I just showed you it's it's level we can do a, a nice spin around the whole model and see what it looks like so that foot then now will be fine like that dragging leg body dragging leg and would be behind us a little bit like that too far forward now look he's definitely his uh, center of balance looked well off then didn't it so that's what this is great for so instantly you can see whether you're you're designing it correctly for for, for real world physics so this leg supports his full body weight because it's underneath him and this leg is off to the side so that's fine so now we're we're properly you know using it as a as a design tool now we're laying out a scene now um, with what we've made so that's cool so let's have him bringing his arm up here and then this arm there we go so there's a nice first pose quite like him I'll save him just call it pose one I'll save a few of these okay what I will also do as well just for my benefit I'll do FBX I'm going to do an export as well uh, I want to do export control mesh and then call it pose one export so I've got the might take a moment just to calculate that but that's just basically going to convert all of the spline based stuff that we've done into polygons and then that that can come out um, and be sent into another program at a later date but it means at least I've got it okay so there's there's uh, our first guy so let's do another floor over here so we can just have a play around with him. So let's do that um, breakdancing mummy that I was telling you about. So he would be spinning on his hand. So his hand would have to change. Um, so his hand becomes completely flat. So all these can be deleted. And we'll just have one finger, sorry, one set of fingers that are splayed out and that means his hands on the on the ground like that group it first we'll bring that hand over there so that's his hand done um, and that means his arm would be coming down his body would be upside down this is going to be really hard to work out isn't it so his head's twisted and his arms around like that his shoulder would be out, definitely his shoulder would be out. So he's up in the air. 
So his other arm, which would be this one. Don't need two heads, do I? This arm would be round like the, this. Let's just see. It would be like this. And then his legs, would his head be under and twisted round? I don't know. No, I quite like it where it was. And then let's do, let's take his legs all in one go and just invert them in one go. This is why I love Gravity Sketch, for just for playing with, with ideas. So his legs would be like that. So that means he's now the right way up and he needs to be balanced over his arm, remember? Because he's doing obviously some kind of breakdance move. Like so. If he's doing a breakdance move, then his legs would be forward like this, but waist blade out and then bent like this. Like that. And this other one will be like this. There we go. I don't need that second one. So there's a breakdance inversion of him. So he's up in the air, going a wee bit crazy. Should we do one more? Let's do one more over here. We're doing a full set of them. We'll take some pictures and then we'll call it a day. Over here, I'll we'll take the whole guy this time. I take a second to calculate, bring him over. So what did we miss? We missed a foot, and we missed the back foot, and we missed the calf. There we go. So let's have him doing a crazy run. So let's have him angling backwards, head like that. So this arm swinging backwards. So that would be this, this arm really swinging backwards. Just adding in some more there. So if this arm's back, this leg will be forward. The floor can stay where it is, sorry about that. So this is forward. And then that this would be comedy backwards. So it will be angled like this. There we go. And then that means this arm would be stupidly up in the air. Like so, we missed his, we, we, we didn't take his arm all in one go then. Like so. And then what you definitely need when you're doing the, the mummy running like the crazy mummy is you need a um, surface tool and you need to go back to your bandage and you need some crazy bandages. Like so. And crazy bandages are here. So if you don't get it quite right, just blue button it. And then you've got all these points to play with, so you can just mess around with it all you want. Again, great being able to do it. It's like being able to the difference between once you've laid down a, a, a raster image in Photoshop as compared to being able to edit all of your splines in Illustrator. So it's a completely different ball game. And then one more. We always need one coming off the back, like that streaming down the street. Woo -woo 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 -woo. Crazy, crazy man. There you go. So there's um, got a mad foot there. I'll get rid of that. So that's three mummies, um, all having different experiences. Um, we'll export it out and we can use it in other, in other programs as we've done. You can just play, let's do a couple of quick little things. You can take some photographs, that will be useful. So um, you can mess around with your field of view here. This is cool. So let's see how far that is. There we go, so there's Breakdancing Boy, and a photograph of him. 
with some nice ones in the background. Let's get a close up on the second one. Just doing his traditional mummy. And then we'll get our running guy. Crazy running guy. How close can we go? There we go. Take one from the top. Turn off. And don't forget you can always do this. Add quad in sketch. Transparent background. And you can take images like so that you can use within the scene. So if you want to do tests and layouts and contact sheets, you can do that as well. So that's how I use uh, Gravity Sketch to do sort of like basic concept in for, for character work. One tiny last thing, um, if you just take this, you can play with the light a little bit. We'll get rid of that one, we don't need it. Uh, you can play with the light here a little bit. And that's, the light's not reacting on all of the, the textures because it's not true in PBR rendering or anything like that yet. I'm sure that's coming in Gravity Sketch at some point. Um, you can try it in different lighting environments, uh, you know, and you can even change the colour yourself, um, to, you know, to get whatever the feel for your scene is if you want to take photographs. But remember, it's you know, the lighting is 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 very rudimentary um, in these early stages. But Gravity Sketch is well worth investing the time having a look if you've never done this kind of work. If you've got a, if you've got access to an Oculus Quest, then you can get this exact experience that I've got here. On the Quest 2, um, and it runs like a dream. So you know, be 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 willing to have a go of it on there if you if you can't get access to a, a higher end PC. Hope you've enjoyed it. I hope it's something that uh, you know works well for Anthony's channel. And uh, have a great Halloween. So my channel is Southern GFX, and if you search Southern GFX YouTube, you'll find us. And if you do like this kind of new ways of creating in innovative ways then please subscribe to the channel and join in all the fun we've only been doing this channel for about 20 weeks now and we're at about 5,000 subscribers now so we're only just beginning but i'd love to see you join us on the channel and you have a great halloween